attach the financial report, the final summary for the GL for the period of July 1, 2015 through June 30, 2016. We completed the fiscal year as planned, and in the year carrying $100,145 in encumbrances. These are expenses for which we did not have an invoice at closing. However, the expenses are attributable to the FY16 year. Utility usage reports are attached. As you can see, we did end the year at about 4% over last year in electricity cost, and we did end the year under on the natural gas as we planned by almost 24%, which was indicative of the nice warm winter we had. Can't guarantee that this year. Um, the budget includes a city appropriation of 52933000 and 1.7 Planned revenue was expended as follows, 52,933,000 general fund expenditures plus 1.5 for planned FY16 general fund expenditures as well as 238,000 offset entry to school revolving accounts. You'll also find attached to your reports the year-to-year -year comparison budget versus actuals. Any questions on FY16? Any questions? Do we have, have to give any money back to the city? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did have one quick question, or one quick note. I noticed at the, um, the end of the year, the fiscal year 2016, that there were three areas in the budget that were more than 10% over their initial budget plan, and those areas were the high school, the middle school, and security. My request is that we keep an eye on these for this year and make sure that they stay within their budget parameters for you to the superintendent. So one of the things you need to remember is, is that in this report, the way it's set up, the distribution of undistributed due to contract negotiations was moved after the fact. So that when that gets moved, they're not over the top. They just simply reflect that contract negotiations took place and that those contributions went, went over there. So that's just the way it is. Uh, that's the way we report it so you see it in totality in the raw score rather than move the money around and then you just balance it out. So we just show it to you the way it is. But in a non-negotiated year, in a year where we're not negotiating a contract, those numbers have already been worked in. So you won't see that this year, but you might see it in another negotiated year. Accept the report and place on file, Madam Chairman. Those who accept, oh. say aye. 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 Could, I just ask, could I just ask one question? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, I almost missed it. Sorry. Um, oh, Pat, I want to thank you for the report. And I, I just wanted to ask just a couple questions for the upcoming school year, you know, in terms of the transportation. Um, I know last year um, there was a planned field trip between um, the elementary school and the high school. And um, I almost missed the opportunity to ask for the funding. Um, so I wanted to mention it now. I don't know if it's a good time, but I wanted to mention that um, I did talk to um, Ms. Lasky and she was interested in doing another field trip between the elementary school and the vocational school like the biotech. They're gonna be, she's gonna be having another aquaponics. And um, I wanted to mention, I don't know if it's something that I should put on the agenda, because it would be something that we would be doing in the spring, you know, um, once they're all set with their so, program. So that would be more appropriate for the, up, for the current fiscal year okay. as opposed to the one that we just passed, because that year's over. Right. Now we're looking at, now we'll look at this year's report to date, and if okay. we can make a recommendation, Okay, so I'll okay. leave. Okay, so that's what I'll probably we'll do. Just accept 2016. Yeah, All definitely. All those in favor of okay. accepting Aye. the report Aye. and placing yes. our file. Um, we can move on to the next agenda item, which is the current year 2017. And um, we'll start with Mrs. Kretz's request. Yep. So um, I also wanted to mention that um, I wanted to make sure that it was extended to all the elementary schools who were, you know, wanted to plan a field trip. Um, the ideal grade, you know, seemed to be like the fourth grade or fifth grade level because they could understand and they were, you know, doing the science program very similar to the vocational biotech, um, and, biotech and um, engineering. And they also went for a walk in the fells. So they were old enough to understand in the same type of science program. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, make that mention. I haven't heard from other elementary schools, but I think it was a great, great 
um, day, and it was just wonderful. I loved it, and you know, I don't want to forget and, and miss the opportunity, so I wanted to mention it. Um, and yep, Mr. Superintendent, would you like so to? So why don't we take that under advisement and okay. see how we can yeah. do it? Okay, and we'll mm -hmm. get right back to you. All right, thank a you. A motion on the floor to have the superintendent provide a report to the committee as to whether or not we can um, provide the elementary school children um, transportation for a trail field trip to our high school building. Um, uh, and by Mrs. Kretz, anyone? Second. Second by Mr. Scarry. <coughs> motion to approve. Aye. 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 Um, motion approved. Thanks. I have one more question that's different. Um, it, it has to do with the, and I know Pat, you, you helped answer the question. It has to do with the MBTA, the S pass. And um, I didn't know if there was, you know, if, you know, do, do we previously, you know, provide the middle schools with the S pass, like the MBTA S pass for students um, at the discounted rate? I know I reached out to my niece who was, you know, when she was at Arlington, um, in her middle school, she got the, you know, the, the discounted student pass. So I didn't know if it was something that, you know, we did or we didn't do, and maybe some people are using it, you know, in addition to the high school, because I know we had the parent who was asking, you know, if we did provide those passes, and I just didn't know where that stood and if it was something that we were gonna explore, you know, getting those S passes for the students. I did, you know, check around with the META, and it is something that, would have to go through the school system, not necessarily the MBTA, but it would be something that would be managed between the school system, you know, to you know to get those passes. So I didn't know if it was something that it would, we were going to pursue, or maybe do like a survey to find out how many middle school parents would be interested in getting the pass, you know, to see if it was worthwhile to put forward for the next school year. Um, we have received emails. Yes, and as I responded to, um, to both of your, all of your emails, I had yes, several yeah, people. Yes, yeah, I got it. Uh, we sell between three and 400 bus passes a month for the high school students to transport outside of the Heights area, and uh, we charge $30 a month for those passes, of which we do not see any money. We keep nothing. It all goes back to MBTA. A few years ago, we did do the middle school passes, is my understanding. We are taking it under consideration. The need is very small. I've, I've literally had a handful of people yeah. ask for them only in the last two weeks, mm -hmm. and we're looking into whether or not we can do that and what it requires from us. We don't have specialized MBTA equipment. We do it all through our own computers and internet, mm -hmm. so it can be a little cumbersome because we're not using a Charlie card machine. So we are looking into it, and um, we should be able to get back to you in the next few okay. days with a okay. decision. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a motion on the floor placed by Ms. Kretz for a report from the superintendent as to a follow-up as to whether we can provide S passes to our middle school and Second. any students attending Method Public Schools. All those in favor? Aye. I just had a question about it. Okay. So the question was, I, I guess I didn't really understand one thing about the S pass. Do the kids, um, can they get the physical pass and load it at an MBTA station, or do they, do we have to, do they have to bring us the money to load? No, but they do have to be tracked and monitored by us. So if they come and check out a card, and if they lose the card, we are the person responsible for reactivating a new card and putting a stop on the old card. So if the card has any money at all left on it, and they come in and say it's lost, then we have to do the actual tracking stopping, reinitiating. So it is a cumbersome task. And I have to tell you that our ratio of lost cards is quite high. <laughs> it's a population. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thanks. There's, there's a motion on the board, second by Mr. Scary. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against, motion passes. Um, current fiscal year 2017 report. Attached, you'll find the summary financial report as of September 21. 10-month biweekly employees have received two checks since August 29th, while our 12-month employees have received six paychecks since July 1. Most hiring has been completed, and new employees have finalized paperwork with the requisite Corey check and request for fingerprinting. Homeless. Currently, MPS provides educational programming to 18 homeless students, of which nine require transport. All students requiring transport have these services in place. 
online payments. The district continues the online payment system and this year has added the after school group to the FACS online payment system. FACS provides families with the ease of their annual tuition divided by 10 equal monthly payments. eCommunity, a MCC product, handles fee-based programming online payments. Special education, contracts and purchase orders are in process for all approved programming. FY17 budget is initially established as 1.2 million general fund, 1 million IDEA grant funding, and the balance circuit breaker. Additional encumbrance details will be provided at the close of the first quarter, which is right around the corner. Telephones, the VoIP system is established for the district. Internal changes due to room moves and name changes are handled internally, and to date all changes have been completed. Transportation, MPS utilizes 18 buses running 2 a.m. routes and 2 p.m. routes serving St. Joseph Catholic School, St. Raphael Catholic School, Minuteman, and MPS routes that pick up at 230 stops. Routes have been reviewed for use and overcrowding. We have made a few adjustments. MPS, K-8 Buildings, and Eastern Bus Company are in the process of completing a manual student count. That information will be used to update our TransFinder system and provide us with the emergency list that we are really looking forward to. We'd also like to add that in response to the mayor's earlier report on the updated crossings, we added a stop to the route um, where the Brooks route goes by High and Alston, mm -hmm. and we've made it so it's all right side pickup along that stretch. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Utilities, the initial three months of the FY17 budget year have been uneventful for utilities. As in the past, all buildings within the district will be monitored and updates provided on a quarterly basis. In closing, the first quarter of the school year is busy with grant closeouts and preparation to complete the state's end of year report. FY17 is progressing as expected and MPS will move forward with continued monitoring of the budget by my colleague, Ms. Patterson. I would like to thank all of you for the opportunity to serve Medford. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Pat. Thank you. Any questions? Motion of approval. Second. Uh, I do have one question, uh, one comment. Um, homeless transportation increased fifty thousand um, dollars in our budget for this year. It tell, it's telling of the times that our families are going through. Um, I did speak with Representative Christine Barber about this yesterday. There was an amendment in the state budget to set up a committee to um, track transportation and how we're paying for it as a commonwealth. And I am hoping to be placed onto that committee. It hasn't been decided as of yet. Um, it, it's an increase in costs. And we have more and more homeless children in our districts. And I know how difficult it is to get rides for all of our children. And I want to personally thank you for the work that you've done to make sure all our students have a ride to school and all the effort that you've put in, um, in transportation especially, because I know it's you know not generally something you would assume is your job. And thank you for all your years of service and all the tremendous change you made in automating our school district and making um, things more easily understandable and specifically personally, teaching me how to read some of these pap papers and things so I don't while the superintendent owes so much. So that's you my own. You actually taught her how to read this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Damn. So now I figured out a few of my questions before I come right. here. So there's a little less stickies, but um, that's my only comment on tonight. Christine, don't make that mistake. <laughs> and and thank, thank you again. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Motion is thank on the you. floor to accept and place the file on, um, to accept and place the file. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All again? Motion passed. Negotiations and legal, oh, no, I'm jumping. Report on 2016 MCAS Park test results and school accountability ratings. So we're going to call on our deputy superintendent to deliver this report. Good or bad? <laughs> Hot off the presses, okay? We just, you don't have these, so don't look for these in your package yet. Um, So I think good is the overall word um, as we start to analyze uh, all of this. The uh, information you have we couldn't give to you earlier because actually we just received it Thursday. We had access to our scores 
on Thursday, and again, we started to analyze things as quickly as we could get things prepared. All of this was embargoed until 5 o'clock this afternoon, so this is why we can share it openly with you right now. Uh, this is the first of what we anticipate to be several reports that we are going to give to the committee. As you know, there are a lot of different layers of analysis dealing with the state testing, so we will again present um, what we have in terms of preliminary information uh, in this report that we prepared for you with Carolyn Joy, Nicole Chiesa, and uh, Rocco Sieri. Um, again, as you probably know, uh, MCAS this past year was administered to just 10th graders in Medford in English and mathematics, and it was the test, the only option for science. Uh, the science MCAS exam is very different than the English and mathematics. The English and mathematics MCAS is administered in grade 10. It's kind of a test that's a cumulative test of what students have learned through the years up through grade 10, where the science high school test is different. The, high, the science high school test a youngster takes uh, after they complete a specific science course. So what we try to encourage is that our ninth graders, most of whom take introductory physics, take the science MCAS introductory physics. However, if a student doesn't take that, they can take the biology when they take the biology course, or they can take chemistry when they take the chemistry course. So science MCAS is a little bit different, and uh, it's been that way since its inception. As you also know, uh, we opted last year, we had a choice for the rest of the school district whether to take MCAS or to take PARC. And we decided to take PARC. Uh, we realized that the new MCAS 2.0 was coming quickly and that the old MCAS was not going to resemble that and the new test was going to be more park like So we opted in grades 3 through 8 in English and Mathematics to have our youngsters be taking the park exam. So what we have tonight are really two uh, different reports. One of them deals with accountability. All right, school and district accountability, and that, again, was embargoed until um, this afternoon. And uh, we're happy to report that we have moved up from a level three to a level two. As you know, last year we had one school that was in level three, and because just takes just one, the entire district was into level three. That school has moved out of level three into level two. We're quite happy to report and the district is now level two. We'd like to be in level one, but again, we'll work towards that this coming year. Um, so, let's see, accountability. How do they determine it? There are really two factors, and it's very complex. Uh, one of them is obviously uh, student performance on the exams. They give scores depending upon how students rate on the exams. However, there's a second part of accountability rating, and that is your participation. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, because what they look for is a certain level of participation for the aggregate in the school, that's all the students, and then each subgroup that's reported out. Every year, they report out, uh, they lower the number of students required to report out a subgroup. It used to be 40. So in other words, you would not get a report on, um, let's say, um, special education unless you had 40 kids in the school. They gradually, over the years, lowered it, so now it's 20. So the threshold for reporting out is now 20. So that's what we're getting reports on. So you get more and more subgroups reported out because you know more and more kids are making up 20 kids within that group. So what happens with participation is that is factored into um, into the whole accountability. So again, um, we basically um, have done well, again, with this meeting level two. I wanted to share with you, we just got this just as we left this evening. Uh, we were able to get the comparative accountability ratings of some other districts. We thought we'd like to share that with you because you might be interested in seeing how some of our neighbors feel.
All right, you can see once you get the sheet that um, we're actually compared to neighbors doing quite well. Um, Arlington, you see most of the accountability ratings are two. Uh, Belmont is a one, but you have Arlington, Burlington, Lexington, Linfield, Melrose, North Reading, um, Stoneham, Wakefield are all level two. You will also see that other districts nearby, uh, Somerville's a level three, uh, Malden's a level three, all right, so those are a little bit lower than we are. Again, many <coughs> communities that are, you know, demographically um, don't have the challenges that we have are level two. So we feel that we are a pretty good company being able to hold to that level. Point of information, Madam Chairman. Point of information, Mr. Scary. Beverly. Beverly. Salem's rated four. Are they a prospect for receivership? Salem actually moved from four to three. So what you have here is 2015 and then 2016. So you can see the movement in communities. So Salem actually kind of get itself out from under that four level because they were under scrutiny as a level four, but now they have progressed to level three. All see right. The, see, the mall then hasn't made any changes, but the state pumps all kinds of money in there and it's nothing's happened. What does that tell you? <laughs> Um, you know, you, you, have, you, you have to work with the students that you have, and I know that every teacher in Malden probably works very, very hard with students. When you have ELL students, and I'm going to share with you what happened at the high school because it, it kind of highlights some of the, the problems that we have with this whole system, is that, you know, a place like Malden has a lot of ELL students, and those students are required to take the science test, they're required to take the math test if they arrive the day before the test is administered. So again, um, they, the only opt out they have is English and that's only for one year. So it's really, I mean, is it fair to these students for them to take this test? No. Are they required to? Yes. And therein lies the problem. So I think what you're seeing in other communities is not that they're, they're not spending their money wisely or they're not following the curriculum or their teachers aren't doing their jobs. I think they all are doing that, but the students that they're working with, sometimes the rules around who has to take the exam are not fair. And I think we're seeing this. So just to kind of share with you what happened at the high school, because high school is level two and it was level one, and that's a concern for us. But it's nothing to do with academics, because as we look at the scores of the MCAS scores, the high school did quite well. In fact, in many cases, we moved a lot of kids into advanced. Um, from actually the lower levels. What happened is the participation rate, and it was only for one subgroup, okay, was the Latin Hispanic subgroup, and there were only 30, what, 32 kids in that subgroup. And it had to do with the science test. And what happened is because the smaller the sample you have of students, the more the statistics are going to be skewed by one or two students. So we had three, four students who did not take that test. And the reason they didn't take it is because they were ELL students and you can't take the science test unless you've taken the rigorous, appropriate science course. These ELL students, no way could they take introductory physics or biology the first year in this country. So what we designed was a course called general science to give them science, but to build them up slowly so they could take the more rigorous courses. There is no general science MCAS. Those students couldn't take the test even if they wanted to, okay, because they didn't take the appropriate course. So what happened is that we had a participant, to be, be level one, you have to have participation rate of 95%, which means that we have 32 kids, 30 kids would have had to take that test to get to the participation of 90%, 95%. And again, we didn't have the kids taking the test, and that's what happened. So we don't want to have the misconception that the high school academically declined. It did not. It actually, in many cases, made improvements. This participation rate is very tricky. This is a subgroup, by the way, that was not reported out to us last year. And this is a subgroup that tends to contain a lot of ELL students. So again, having no knowledge that this was a problem area, Again, we need to pay attention. We need to, 
as silly as it sounds, if we're going to try to reach for the goal, that's the level one, we have to put kids in courses, ELL kids in rigorous science courses, which I don't think is the right thing to do, and if we want them to take the exam. Otherwise, they can't take it. So it's a catch-22. It's a terrible situation that I don't know how we can work around. They're talking about changing accountability. Let's hope they change it in that direction, because it's yeah. not fair to those kids. So you might want to know that Boston Latin is level two. It gives you an idea. It isn't an academic issue. Participation. It's a participation yeah. issue. And we see it in Andover High School and a lot of other places that you would consider to be you know, immune to this. They're not. This is a whole discussion that has to happen. Uh, you may remember when AYP, Annual Adequate Yearly Progress, was the benchmark, and everyone was going to be proficient by 2014. At some point around 2012, 80% of the schools couldn't make it, so they had to scratch it because it was an unrealistic target. As long as you're going to set up some of these, these parameters that don't work for certain youngsters, you're going to have difficulty making it on the participation level or on the you know, achievement level as well. But this is what we're facing. So there'll be some discussions at the state level about this. The new Federal Act, ESSA, gives the states more flexibility. Let's see what they do with it. Let's see how this, what kind of discussion they have on that level. Because obviously, if they don't have a discussion, you're going to see the same phenomenon as, as you saw with AYP. There's going to be more and more districts that drop down. And that's not going to, that's not going to fly. So I guess it comes down to, as a district, uh, do you make an ELL kid suffer through a year of coursework that they can't understand at all? Or do you put them in a more reasonable course where they can really learn something? But then we run into this problem. So. This is the catch-22 that we're, we're dealing with. But again, we are level two. Uh, we'd like to be level one, but I think we've made progress on that. Um, and again, you have what our neighbors have done as well. The state assessment, um, the only comparisons we really can make right now would be with the MCAS, because we don't have data from Park from last year to compare with the results last year. So what the directors did is they prepared summaries, they did the highlights of the MCAS for grade 10. Uh, because the science is grade 5, 8, and high school, Mr. Sieri did all three grade levels. You can kind of read over the highlights, look at the data. We have the data for you. The park, because it's so new, we're still in the process of examining it. We have numbers, but we're still trying to put some meaning to the numbers. One of the things that you should know is that PARC is scored very differently than MCAS, where MCAS has the four categories, uh, advance, um, proficient, needs improvement, and, and warning, or is unsatisfactory. Uh, the PARC is, is, um, is a, judged on a five-point scale. And so the designations are that um, somebody has exceeded expectations, met expectation, approximated expectations, partially met, and so on. So it's a very, and we don't quite understand all of the meaning behind that, and that's what we're looking at next. Now, we were told that there's not gonna be a state uh, report in terms of how the students did statewide, because some of the students still took MCAS. So to do a comparison with state M a park results would leave out a lot of districts. So we've been told, although I'm, I'm not sure that could change, that the state's not going to give us a comparison figure. So we may not even be able to say Medford did so much better or so much worse in each category than the state, because we, are t we have, don't have that data right now, and we've been told we're not going to get it. But we will be looking at that. The student reports, all of them, MCAS and PARC, will be arriving at our doorsteps on the next couple of days. Our plan is to get the results out to parents by the end of the week. So we that's kind of our plan. Mr. Scary? For you to yeah. Have educators and teachers indicated to the Department of Education if the kids are having a problem with science, why can't they take it in their native language? It might give them a leg up so that they can further progress. They used to have MCAS when it all started. They used to have a Spanish version of it. They did away with it. This is for English and math. They, the, the, the thinking with ELL is that you know, these students have to be fully immersed in the language as soon as possible. The testing, though, is, is 
it just bothers them because it's just like, you know, someone giving us a test in, in Arabic and we've yeah, only I, been here I, for, I think from the know, state's you know point of view, it would be advantageous if they know there's a certain test right. that the kids can't pass. No. Why not, you know, make it a little easier for them and then they can pick up speed along yeah. the way. There's a um, discussion between the House and the Senate. They both have different viewpoints on the bilingual or ELL laws. Um, the Senate would like to change what the UNS amendment did. The House is still moving around on it a little bit, and they haven't been able to reach a, uh, any kind of consensus. So there's a lot of ferment around this stuff right now. The other, the other thing I think that, that becomes uh, obvious uh, to us is is that uh, these tests, you know, last year they tried to use something called the equi percentile to try to find some sort of crossover between MCAS and PARC. We think it was a very faux attempt to try and compare two very different tests. Yeah. And notice the state isn't going to do it this year. Right. Obviously, somebody time. came to the no same results. conclusion, even though, you know, last year we said to them, we don't think this works. And um, I think they came to the conclusion that since they couldn't really compare all the districts, and we think to some degree that impacted our scores last year and impacted our rating last year. That's just our thinking about it, but I can't prove it, so so be it. Mrs. Vanderloop. Madam Chair, since uh, the results were just released this afternoon and school committee members have only received the preliminary report, I think that with the information that was provided so far, um, by uh, the deputy superintendent that at this point it seems like it would be appropriate for us to uh, move this to a um, subcommittee meeting uh, when the rest of the analysis has been done. So I make a motion to move it to um, the curriculum subcommittee meeting. Motion on could I second by? Oh, could I just second. ask a question before we do that? Um, I, I had a question I was waiting to ask. Um, so I wanted to know, because I know the results are coming out this week, and um, so the, the parents or, you know, the students who are 10th graders, who are now juniors, um, and, you know, they're going to get their results, and they need to know if they have to take the retest mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Yes. Um, how quickly is that information going to be made available to those parents and the students because um, I know that there was prep work that was done, MCAS prep that's done, and you know, what are the plans for that? And are those students, if they have to take the retest, where the MCAS 2.0 isn't going to be out till next spring, the students have to take the retest coming up this November? Because that's I don't know the exact date, but it's November. Right. So. You know, what are the plans? You know, I mean, I, my son's a junior, and, you know, this is, you know, the big, you know, grade we're waiting for. And I know there's a lot of other parents out there, so it's, you know, a lot of anxiety around that, you know, the scoring and, you know, and where is the new test, you know? Right. The, um, the retest, first of all, would be the old MCAS test because mm -hmm. the MCAS 2.0 is still in the developmental phases, okay? So that's not ready. I think they're very ambitious to think they're going to have it ready for the spring, but they're telling us they are. The results will go home to parents. As soon as we get those in tomorrow or the next day is when we've been told by the state, we'll get the principals to pick them up. Labels are made. There's, our goal is to ship them out by, if, if we get them on time this week, we're going to ship them out by Friday to everyone. So people will know by next week. In terms of the plans to do the retest, um, Again, this is just the high school level, obviously. Mm -hmm. As you know, we don't have our academic support money. They did away with the grant. And the mm -hmm. academic support grant used to support the MCAS prep, both for the 10th grade test mm -hmm. and for the retest. But I know that Mr. Blau and Dr. Perella and Dr. Riccio are looking for ways mm -hmm. to get those kids, whether we have to put some of the district money into this to get some tutors, mm -hmm. um, we try to get those kids ready for that retest mm -hmm. as soon as possible. So they'll have a good, a good month to be able to prep, and I know the high school's already trying to be creative in finding ways we can we can use, uh, find money to yeah. make sure these kids, because the MCAS academic support money was really very helpful. Yep. It's gone. Right, and, and that's a concern, because that was a great program. It was like a six-week program, 
you know, for the students who needed help with either math or the English and, you know, you know, is, I'd like to, I don't know if I could make a motion that we can make some budget money available for those students, you know, to get the prep and the, the assistance they need, you know, to help them so they can graduate because this is, this is a big deal and, you know, students need the assistance, you know, some of them struggle with testing. Um, a lot of the strategies I know, you know, that the students learned was, you know, helpful in the repetition, you know, and where there was a break over the summer and, you know, things are, you know, getting back into the swing of things. Um, you know, I think it's definitely something that we need to make a priority for the students. I, I will be with the high school. As soon as we get the scores in and we see where we stand with the the number of kids who have to take the retest. Maybe we don't have anybody. Maybe they all passed, I know, that's which true. would be very nice. <laughs> but uh, I'll meet with the high school group, uh, staff next week, and we'll work something out. There's usually not a huge number of kids, yeah. so we'll we'll find something that works because we want them to right. get diplomas. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there's currently two motions on the floor. The first motion is um, to conduct an academic com committee subcommittee meeting. Um, where we can go over all testing results um, from that were recent released curriculum mm -hmm. subcommittee. Curriculum subcommittee. Sorry. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 And we have a second motion by Ms. Press um, for the superintendent to provide us a cost report of implementing a six-week MCAS prep program, mm -hmm. so that way um, in in as quickly as possible so we can help all of our high school students. You want to assess how many students are involved. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Because we'll have to find out. Yep. Do an assessment mm -hmm. and a cost analysis of what you'd need from the school committee to be able to provide that program. Well, we'll get to that for our next meeting. meeting. As soon as uh, we get the results, we'll, yes, we'll exactly. start on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I need a second, second on that motion. Second by Mrs. Cuneo. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed. Took both motions have passed. Um, I need a motion to accept and place this report on file. Motion to accept and place on file. Thank Second. you, Mr. Finch. Second by Ms. Finch. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Um, our next item is negotiations and legal matters. There are none. Nope. Old business. We have selection of delegates for the MASC fall conference. Mr. Superintendent. Just up to you to decide who you want to be the delegate on the on the alternate to the conference at this point in time. We put it off from last meeting, so we're on tonight. Mrs. Vanderclough. Ma Madam Chairman, I nominate Mrs. Vanderclough to be the alternate. Yeah. Mrs. Vanderclough. Yeah. Um, I accept the nomination, and after discussion with Mr. Scurry, where he assures me he will attend the meeting, I nominate Mr. Scurry to be the delegate to the MASC fall conference. We have two nominations. Do we have a second? We need a second on that. Oh, oh, okay. I second. I second, second by Mrs. Kretz. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Roll call. Roll call vote. Mrs. Cuneo? Yes. Mrs. Ba well, Mrs. Carey, I'm Mr. sorry. Mr. Benedetto? Yes. Ms. Kretz? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Mustone? Yes. Mr. Scurry? Yes. Ms. Van Yes. Give me one woman shot here. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh. Um, so also on this report, um, we have a report from the superintendent on the cost involved in attending. Mr. Superintendent. So we gave you a report on the on the costs. They're actually spelled out for you. And you know, if someone wanted to only go for one or two days, MASC indicated that we could talk to them about it, depending on what their numbers look like. Costs. And that include their hotel thing. Um, no, hotels would be different. This is a registration cost. Hotels or whatever you see, whatever they are. Generally about hundred dollars a night. Mrs. Cuneo. To, to the superintendent. I just want to say that I'm really happy that both of my colleagues are gonna be able to get there for the vote. That's an important and very important piece of this conference. It gives us uh, some room at the table, which is nice for our opinions to be seen uh, to be heard. Um, I'm not going to commit to the whole four days because I am actually working right now on trying to get unpaid leave to get down there, but my cost will be less. And I believe Paulette's cost will be less because we're both lifetime members. So I will uh, inform the superintendent of the days that I'll be going. Any other questions? 
Um, I'd like to make a motion at this time that the superintendent report back to the school committee the total cost of all expenses with attending this conference. Okay. I need a second. I second. Motion carried. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion accepted. Um, item approved to be placed on file. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. That's accepted. Communications? None. Yeah. Oh, um, there is one. I'm going to ask um, Mr. Scary to read tonight's motion. Mr. Scary. That the Medford School Committee extend its condolences to the family of Frank Andre, who passed away this week. Uh, Frank's daughter, Cara, is a teacher in the special ed department. Frank was very active in civic affairs in the community. Uh, he had two great passions, horse racing and youth baseball. He was a little league coach in North Medford for many years. Uh, later years, he lived across the street from the park on Fulton Street. And uh, he was a 24-7 watchman and uh, always had plenty of advice for the youngsters. Uh, I considered Frank a good friend. Frank would always call me and uh, let me know what we're doing right here, what we're doing wrong, and how things should change. Uh, Frank was also a candidate for this austere body in 1951 when my dad was serving. Uh, he'll be sorely missed. And again, our condolences go out to the Andre family, and I ask that we observe a moment of silence for Frank. All those stand, please. Condolences sent to the family. Thank you, Mr. Scary. That concludes our business for this evening. Um, meeting has been adjourned. Motion to, adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Adjourned. Okie dokie.